back in the early days of consumer photography, Kodak was king of the hill. With a large film and camera manufacturing plant in the northwest corner of Toronto, Ontario. The campus at one time comprised 16 buildings. All that's left is building number 9, shuttered since 2006. This former recreation and entertainment facility for Kodak employees is now the repository of 66 years of a company's and the community's memories. So when it became clear that Building 9 lay squarely in the path of Metrolink's expanding transit network, they devised a plan to preserve some of Toronto's not-so-distant past and convert Building Number 9 to a modern train station. But first, it would have to be moved out of the way to allow for construction of the necessary rail lines and transfer access. And that's where the engineering acumen of Western Mechanical comes into play. They have experience with moving very heavy, but extremely delicate behemoths. Western will employ the same series of hydraulic motors and rollers that were used on the Nipigon Bridge to guide this building along steel-plated concrete runners. You have to think about the equipment that we have and uh, the best, most economical way of doing it. Weeks of preparation went into digging out the building's foundations to construct the runners underneath. Then, the exterior walls had to be severed at the base. Massive steel beams were slid into place atop the hydraulic rollers. It's a tough go. We had to get these 44-inch uh, beams in there that were 160 feet long and then thread the 75s on top of them. This 1.2 million pound crosshatch of steel is designed to support all 5 million pounds of this building. Once in place, the original support columns will be severed. Lifting the building from its moorings is the critical part of the operation. Any error in calculation would result in an uneven lift and destruction of the heritage structure. The biggest task of that was trying to preload some of the uh, beams because as the building was elevated, we had to make sure that uh, it all comes up at the same time. Some parts of the building are a little lighter than others, and the engineers did a great job because as we saw cut it and lifted the building, it all came up as one unit. The building's entire weight now rests upon the new steel. So we got here is an electric power hydraulic unit. They are usually used with our strand jacks for hoisting things, but now we're using them just to drive the rollers. So we got the uh, 15 horsepower variable speed motor in there, controlling a pump, which is then uh, split off through the hoses. Each hydraulic pump runs two of the motors, and they're all linked together and communicate back to the laptop where we're operating from. After months of prep work, the big day has finally arrived. Doug, we are a go. And with those final words, the building begins its migration. Okay, boys, we're there. Things are rolling good. We're at about 50% of our uh, expected speed. Uh, we'll probably travel like this until we know that the columns have cleared the, the one north of it. But we just want to make sure that we have everything clear before we actually ramp up the G to speed, as 10 watt would call it. The black wall is clearing that column. Okay, Andrew, I think we're clear to uh, give her another gear. Copy that, grab it another gear. The roller system is operating perfectly and on schedule, but the team remains on high alert. Yeah, Doug, we're running 75% uh, here. We got one more gear left. Okay, give her the last gear. Everything's working so well that we're able to go at full speed and everyone's happy and things are looking great. With the system ramped up to full speed, the crew at Western gives this historic building 
one last gentle yet mighty push towards a seemingly impossible goal. All I can say is the crew, the boys that have been working on it, have done a good job. Through expertise and ingenuity, that impossible goal is now a reality. Then we're done here, brother. All right, fellas, that's it. <laughs>